Hey everyone, welcome back. This is our final video in the series of VM monitoring using Sensu. And in this one, we're going to discuss about the things to keep in mind when you actually implement Sensu in production. This is going to be a very short video. So let's get started. So as you may remember, this was the setup that we had. We had a single Sensu backend server and that meant it was a single point of failure. If for some reason our Sensu backend goes down, then our entire monitoring is gone for a toss. So obviously do not do this in production. So Sensu have a very good documentation about deployment architecture for production use case and Sensu do support clustered architecture. So that's what you should be aiming for when you actually use this in production. So this is one example of a production architecture that makes use of three backend servers. So instead of one, there will be three Sensu backend servers and uh, they will be in a clustered mode. That means even if one goes down, it will still function because the other two are up and running. So the HTTP API and the web UI requests will be load balanced using some sort of a load balancer like Nginx or uh, HAProxy or something like that. And this HCD store is also clustered. That means even if one server goes down, it's still fine. It, it will still be able to maintain its states in the other two HCD servers. The nodes that we want to monitor, our agents uh, or our machines that we want to monitor, it would be communicating to the Sensu uh, WebSocket API through an internal load balancer. Means like it doesn't have to go through the internet to be able to reach our Sensu servers. If you are completely new to the you know, cloud architecture, you know, different regions, VPC and all, don't worry about it. This I'm just giving an explanation for those who are experienced in this and uh, are planning to implement Sensu in production. All right, so first of all, we definitely need to have cluster deployments. And another thing that we need to have is we need to have configuration management in place for sure. So far, if you remember, we have been creating the, the agents, uh, you know, manually, like we created the checks manually, we used the Sensu CTL command to create the checks and um, we edited the config files manually. But obviously this is not going to be the case in a production environment. You need to use some sort of configuration management tool to automate all of this. So let's say you have a hundred different servers and uh, each server should have its own agent.yaml file. And this should be managed using a configuration manage, uh, ma management tool such as Ansible. So when a new server is coming up, it should automatically apply this configuration and uh, automatically register to the Sensu backend without having to do anything manually. And there should not be any kind of edits to any of these files by hand. It should all be done using uh, configuration management tools such as Ansible or Chef. Think of it this way. Let's say you have a uh, 10 identical servers. So let's say 10 servers running WordPress. You will have one playbook or one Chef recipe that would manage all of them. So you should be creating the Sensu Agent .yaml as part of this. You know, if it's a web server, then you have different things to monitor. Like you need to monitor HTTP and uh, uh, port number 80 and things like that. But then there would be things that needs to be monitored across the fleet of servers like CPU, memory, disk usage, etc. So you would have one base class that would have all these basic system related checks like CPU, memory, disk usage, IO usage, etc. And that will get applied to all the servers regardless of if they are running a web server or a database server or an application server. All right. So definitely we need to have configuration management tools in place for that. And Another thing is etcd. We did not talk much about etcd, but we can encrypt the traffic between etcd servers. Uh, we are talking about a scenario where we have multiple etcd servers, uh, multiple Sensu backend servers, right? So we may want to use TLS to encrypt the traffic between them. And for that, what we need to keep in mind is that to configure TLS on the etcd would require us to reset all the etcd members. That means it will lose all the data. So if you are setting up a production environment and if you want to communicate securely among the HCD members, you need to set up TLS beforehand. You need to set up TLS first before you actually have production data in any of these HCD servers. Another thing is TLS for the Sensu UI and Sensu API. So here we use the HTTP API and uh, web UI through a load balancer, right? So this should be protected over TLS. We do not want people reaching out to uh, our Sensu uh, UI or API through plain text. So you would have something like Nginx in here that acts as a load balancer and a TLS termination. So all the communication over the internet all the way through this load balancer is encrypted using TLS. So another thing would be access control or like 
or how do you actually log into Senso? In our videos, we only talked about using a username and password. And that is fine if, you know, your team is like a really small and uh, only a very limited number of people access these dashboards. But it's not fine if you have more people and uh, it's a very bad security practice to share credentials. So, so that's something that you need to think about. And one more thing is we can have different roles, role bindings and um, permissions apply to different users. You know, maybe developers do not really need uh, permission to delete any of these resources. They may just need to be able to view these events or uh, look at the dashboard. Maybe the operations people are the one that is supposed to have the admin privilege. So you can set up different roles and uh, permissions according to your requirement. All right. So. That's pretty much it for our series on the virtual machine monitoring using Sensu. Again, remember, this is only monitoring virtual machines. We haven't talked about containers or uh, Prometheus or anything, and we will be talking about them in future. In our next series, I'm planning to start with Docker. Let me know in the comments what you think, or if you have different ideas, I'm open to suggestions. So again, thanks for watching. Please leave a like and a comment to keep me motivated and uh, see you in the next one.